Namaste. So I finally realized the meaning of these very deep verses in the Ishopanishad, which describe the relationship between the Karma Kanda and the Jnana Kanda. Now let me read them to you. Andhang tama pravishyanti ye avidyam upasate tato bhuya ivate tamo ya uvidyayang rata vidyang cha vidyang cha yas tadvedo bhayam saha avidyayam rityung tirtva vidyayam ritamashnute. Mantra 9. Those who worship avidya, rites, alone, enter into blinding darkness. But those who are engaged in vidya, meditation, alone, enter into greater darkness than that. Mantra 11. He who knows these two, vidya and avidya, together, attains immortality through vidya by crossing over death through avidya. Enigmatic, isn't it? Well, it seems that way until you penetrate the actual understanding. In other words, rites alone, rituals and pujas and like that, by themselves, will not give the result, the final result of moksha. They can only give like elevation to higher planets and stuff like that, which is nice, you know, but it's still karma it's still just temporary and you know and when the effect is worn off then you come back again but brahma vidya which means knowledge of brahman and the meditations based on it if you reject avidya and only do vidya you wind up even more deluded <laughs> And we see this with the neo Advaitins. They reject all, all karma kanda. They don't do any rituals. They don't do any sadhana or any of that stuff, study Vedas or whatever. They only do the non-dual stuff. And they fall down. Why? We've been saying this for years. <laughs> because they don't have the proper foundation in the karma kanda. So if you try to do the jnana kanda without simultaneously doing the rituals, you fall down. And you, either way, you don't make it. Huh? But when you combine them together, the rituals and the meaning, the meditation and the rites, then you get the result. How is that? You become immortal by vidya, by Brahma vidya, cultivation of knowledge of Brahman. You become immortal, enlightened, aham brahmasmi, and all that. But then you still have to cross over death. How do you do that? By the rites, by the avidya, by the karma kanda by the rituals, the prayers, the mantras, and so on. So doing both together gives you the result that you really want. See, this is like the Buddha. Whenever the Buddha was approached by someone with a, a black and white, yes or no, didactic, you know, Aristotelian logic type question, he said, no, this is not a valid question. I'm not going to answer this. And he often just remained silent. But the Buddha said, I reject views and opinions. I reject this black and white, yes or no, right or wrong. Choose one or the other, you know, logic. Because they lead to extremes. And extremes are almost always wrong. So I follow the path in the middle, which is the path of process. I know how the creation took place by paticca samupada. So now I can understand how the reverse process also takes place. And then I use 
the rituals and the meditations together to get the final result. This is the mature conclusion of not only the Upanishads, but the whole Vedas in general. Because you see, they give both, like in Bhagavad Gita, the path of action and the path of knowledge. And Arjuna gets all confused about it. Will you finally tell me, Krishna, which is better, the path of works or the path of knowledge? And Krishna goes, well, you know, kind of both. <laughs> it's not very clear in Bhagavad Gita, in most editions of Bhagavad Gita, <clears throat> but in the edition with Shankara's commentary, it's quite clear. You have to read the commentary. And he makes it very clear. But most people don't get it. And so we have to get beyond that. We have to now offer education so that the people who are doing the rituals understand the meaning. And we have to offer education in the rituals to the people who are stuck only doing the knowledge part, only the meditation part, because they can't get the result unless they combine both together. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.